How much can landing in snow protect you from a fall? Well, we've seen it save people who jumped off a roof or dived off a cliff. And yes, even who fell from the top of a mountain. But what about a fall from even higher up? Like from an airplane? How much snow would be required to break that kind of fall? What kind of snow would be the best to fall into? And how should you position your body for a safe landing? This is what if. And here's what would happen if you fell from an airplane into snow. Okay, what ifers. If you're planning on jumping out of an airplane without a parachute, you might want to check out our video on what happens if you die. Because that's what you'd have to look forward to. The math changes depending on how much you weigh, but let's imagine that you weigh 65 kilograms. As you fall from an airplane that's thousands of meters in the air, your body would travel at a velocity of 55 meters per second. And when you smash into the solid ground below, that velocity would instantly drop to zero meters per second, causing catastrophic injuries. But if there was a whole bunch of snow on top of that solid ground, it might be enough to save you from dying. Don't believe me? Well, it's happened before. In 1972, a Serbian flight attendant named Vesna Vulovic survived the mid-air explosion of a jetliner after plummeting hundreds of meters through some trees and landing on a snowy hill. Yeah, she broke her legs, pelvis, some vertebrae, and fractured her skull, but if a little snow could save her life, then why not yours? But let's not get too confident here, because there are still a ton of ways that this could go completely wrong. If you're going to survive, you'll need a bunch of factors to line up perfectly. The key to surviving a fall from an airplane is to make your deceleration last as long as possible. Okay, math again. If you weigh 65 kilograms and fall 6 kilometers, you'd be heading down to Earth at a velocity of 55 meters per second. If you land on solid ground and you only decelerate for half a second, you'll hit with a force of 7.1 kilonewtons. If you're not a math teacher or a scientist, that's 726 kilograms. But if you were able to stretch that deceleration out by even the smallest of amounts, it could make a world of difference. For example, even stretching the deceleration time out to one second would reduce the force to 356 kilograms. And if you decelerate for two seconds, it would be 183 kilograms. Landing in a nice bed of snow could definitely help you slow down enough to save you. But it would have to be the right type of snow. The snow would need to be able to compress, slowing your fall to less than 98 meters per second squared. So the snow must be thick enough for this to occur about 80 meters. The reason why you need to travel at less than 98 meters per second squared is that this is 10 times the force of gravity, the approximate acceleration that humans can make without too much damage. So considering all this, you'd better cross your fingers that you'll be landing in lots of soft, fresh snow. Because of its lower density, fresh, dry snow can be compressed more and soften your landing. Packed snow and wet snow are denser than fresh and dry snow, so they can't be compacted as much and wouldn't extend your deceleration enough to save you. But even if you're 100% sure that the snow you're landing in is fresh, deep and dry, you're still not out of the danger zone. To give yourself the best chance at survival, you're going to want to land in a belly flop. That may seem strange, but it would actually be the safest choice. You see, if you land feet first, all of your weight will press down on that small area. But if you land on your belly, your weight will be more evenly distributed, so you won't be hurt as badly. Now, if by some chance you happen to survive the landing without too many injuries, you're going to have to dig your way out of the snow. 
As you can imagine, falling all the way down from an airplane would be pretty disorienting, so your first step for getting out of the snow would be to figure out which way is up. One helpful trick that I always use is to drool a little and see which direction it slides down your face. The opposite of that is upwards. Of course, this is all easier said than done. In reality, there's a reason we've only heard of one person who's ever survived falling out of a plane. Because it's very unlikely to happen. Unless you've found some way to obtain immortality. But that's a story for another What If.